pray at night and I was like, Lord, when I have my own family, we're going to serve the Lord and my children are going to go into your presence. You know, and, and anytime the church doors are open, they're going to be there. Welcome to Tribal Trails. I'd like to introduce to you Pat and Sylvia Edwards from Timmins, Ontario. Our subject today is about addiction, not the drugs kind, but about gambling. Something people don't like to talk about, but it can become an addiction. Pat Edwards is a very hardworking man with a beautiful wife and family. He talks about his struggles with gambling, but also the victory when I heard his story, I marveled at the love and mercy of our Lord, also the mighty work and power of God, his ability to take the rags of our life and weave them into something beautiful. This girl wrote me a letter one day, and, and uh, I think I was about 17, and I and says, uh, will you go with me? And I said, no. <laughs> and so, and she wrote it. It was so beautiful. She wrote a, a letter. And, yeah. And, uh, I was 14. Oh, she was 14? Yeah. I think I must have been about 16. And so I said, <laughs> this was after the fire and after you'd lost everything yeah, and you were so I said, no, started I, gambling. I told her no. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, eventually uh, down the road there, I think we were, I think in our twenties, and and I saw her uh, at a at a chip stand we have in Musani. And did you recognize that that was the girl that sent you that letter? Yeah. Oh well, no, uh, I I totally forgot all about the letter. <laughs> <laughs> she had to. She told me about it. <laughs> then in a way, I met her at the at the chip stand, and I was intoxicated and. Uh, my lips were all red <laughs> for the, drinking. Yeah, from drinking, and uh, and I told her something, and she got all mad. So she says, <laughs> and she said, who does who who does he think he is? Anyway, God uh, God gifted woman or something. God's gifted woman. God gifted, God gifted woman or something. <laughs> that was on a Sunday. I think we just had church that morning, and we wanted to get lunch. Me and my friend, this other girl, and. And I went to go pay for the for the fries, yeah. make the order, and then he's there and he's standing there. And I and did you know it was him you wrote that letter yeah, to? Yeah, I remembered him. And I, he goes, "Oh, you're looking good today, Sylvia." And I'm like, I just didn't say anything to him or acknowledge. I just hopped back in the car and I told my friend, "You go get the fries when they're ready. I'm not going back out there." He's he said this to me, and I was really mad. And <laughs> there was nobody around. I don't know why I was. Uh, <laughs> But eventually, I I call her after, and it's a way, when you sobered up. Yeah, well, kind of. Yeah, it was, it was never really too too sober. And uh, but anyway, we met up and we we started dating, and she wasn't supposed to date me. <laughs> but anyway, when we we end up dating, and we uh, we end up getting uh, married after, and yeah. And then in the driveway of my and my my brother my brother's driveway, and she asked me to uh, if we want to get married. So she proposed to me. And she proposed. <laughs> <laughs> she sought you and proposed to you. He really loves that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Tells everybody Bring, this. Brings that up all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't an official proposal. It was like. Yeah. Do you want to get married? Uh, okay, let's get married. Yeah, I guess so. so. It was like, you know, do you want to go to the movies tomorrow? It was it. <laughs> then, I, then I made a right and I went to, to see the father, uh, my father-in-law, I guess now, and and I Aww. sat down and in his house Good and said, you. I want to... Sober, you sobered up? Yeah, I want to marry your daughter. Then I don't think he was too happy, but he, he said, uh, make sure that you take good care of her and... and, and uh, that's what he said. So, so after like 19 years, and we're, well, almost 19, and we're still together. And but we had a, a lot of up and down. A man can build on a mountain top or in a valley low. He may build himself a humble shack or a mansion tree.
When did you accept the Lord? I, I accepted the Lord in 2001. After you got married? After. Or while you were dating? While we were dating, yeah. I yeah, think I, okay. I got uh, I accepted got the Lord. And, she sobered you up and got you to church. Yeah, I got 99, yeah, I, I accepted the Lord. But it didn't last too long. Like a, oh. I was. Uh, Did it for her. I fell away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mm. fell away, and then uh, I think I tried again in in 2001, but it mm. didn't work out again. And and uh, until I, I believe in. Why do you think it didn't work out? I was. Uh, I think I was too. Uh, too deep into my uh, my gambling, it was very strong and at the casinos. Yeah, casinos and even house uh, house gambling and oh. yeah, that was uh, yeah. That's all. That's it all. It became I, a part of your yeah, life, yeah, everyday was, life. Yeah. It was uh, it was something uh, that was uh, I don't know. I'd say good at it, but I, I yeah. understand every every rule in 2011. That's when I, uh, like, I hit rock bottom. Like, I was, uh, I was in, just so deep into everything, and eventually... Uh, just controlling your life? Yeah, it was, like, loss, and it was the, the drugs, and not the alcohol, oh. and, and, and the gambling, and, and, the, the, and the job. I had a... I was working at a at a mine too, and I was, and, and I lost my job, and and I had mostly all my jobs that I that I had that tried to work and didn't work out. The one year I hit I hit a rock bottom, and and I was incarcerated. The best of plans and good intentions don't always work for different reasons. Reality sets in, and we are left to embrace our struggles. Paul says in Ephesians, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Our struggles will either draw us closer to the Lord or drown us. We give up and walk away. Walk away, not a good option. I'd like to encourage you to trust the Lord. Nothing will be gained by walking away. The God of all creation is walking beside you to help you through the valley and he does not fail. If we can assist you with prayer or some material to help you, please give us a call. We are going back to Pat, where he shares how he turned a not-so-good situation into something very positive. It took me nine months to get acquitted. And oh, yeah. okay, okay. Then, uh, but, uh, but during the time that I was there, uh, and, and I, well, I accepted the Lord uh, in jail, and for for the whole nine months, I was uh, like reading the Bible and studying and doing all that, and and away from gambling. So and that away was, from gambling. That was good in a way. Yeah. And yeah. There was days in the, in jail where I had to uh, had to say, Lord, forgive me, about a hundred times. Uh, yeah. My mind was just going crazy, and then one day I just realized, and I asked the Lord. Did I sin today? I said, I don't think I sinned today. It was just like a few months later, and <laughs> but there are some like uh, uh, so eventually I had some like a uh, fellow uh, like inmates that are, that asked me to pray for them and pray for my family, and and they they saw a change in me too. Like uh, they, they said, you don't belong here, he says, and. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comforts to him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him who is far off and to him who is near, says the Lord, and I will heal him. And I just kept... Uh kept reading and sharing the word with them and it was exciting because I'd never read the Bible like that before and so I wanted to learn and they wanted to learn too because and uh, because some of them 
do accept the Lord in there. And it's, so we, I came home after, and I'm still safe today, but it's, it's really, it's hard because I still have that, the addiction, or uh, yeah. my, my gambling, and, and. Just when you think it's gone, it. Yeah, I'm trying to over, still overcome it today, and then, uh, but I'm, I'm on the right path in a way, and uh, yeah. yeah, I'm on, mm. and uh, we just, uh, we uh, shared about it, and. Uh, mm. our, so uh, when you share about it, where do we, you share? Uh, on our reserve and one day and I said, I can, because they were having a, what'd you call that in a way, uh, where they had a, like for, for gambling, for drug and alcohol. Addictions. And I said, yeah, addictions one day. And I said, uh, I can share a story. I said, yeah. about uh, about my gambling, I said. And mm -hmm. from there, I, I, I shared about my life and mm -hmm. how did it affect uh, the home and, and the people around me and and myself and and I went to and I got invited out to uh, a conference or not a conference uh, yeah a conference in uh, Thunder Bay Ontario okay. and I shared with all the the mental health workers and uh, oh. and then uh, how. Uh, like we, I think we were the first couple to share me and my wife, and uh, how it affect the family and people. How gambling affects yeah. the family. It doesn't really they realize that yeah. it affects them, and that it, not only me. And he may build it in the country or the city by the sea. He may furnish every room to the stars. Eventually, uh, we uh, so we have a, I have a son. I have a, my my daughter is, uh, Grace. She's uh, 21 today, and she's into a mining course. And uh, my son uh, Clifford's uh, 17 years old, and he moved away this fall. He's playing, he's playing hockey and uh, yeah. about two of them. Okay. And uh, he keeps an eye on me when we're riding around on the on a truck and and I, when I listen to CBC and uh, CBC News and uh, uh, some songs would come on, he would change it right away. You're not listening to that, he would say. So he keeps an eye on me like he's still, uh, like uh, any any uh, rock and roll music that comes on, he always shut it off right away. He, he, like he, His heart is, uh, is still serving the Lord, even though he, he's still like, uh, it's in him, I guess. And, yeah. Yeah, and our daughter, uh, Ava, and she's uh, 13, and she 
likes to sing. I see their faces, look in their innocent eyes. They're just children from the outside. I'm working hard. I tell myself they'll be fine. They're independent, but on the inside, I can't. strong hands stand up and I can't don't want to leave me hungry for love chasing dreams what about us show me willing to find that I'm the love of your life In 2014, I was working on a on a business a business a, a business plan. You know I mean, like I had no, I have no like uh, I had like no education in, in the business world, and I have. A, but uh, but uh, but God gave me the ability to understand numbers and. Oh, that God gave me, but I had the numbers already. You knew the numbers from gambling. I used the numbers and God helped me later. Put it to good use. <laughs> Put it to use, yeah. Okay. yeah but I, I, took a, I took a course uh, to work in a process plant. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, it was a 16-week course, and uh, and I think I only have... I didn't finish grade 8. I was too old for grade 8, yeah. and I went to grade 9, and I had a... I had two two it's credits. Too hard. Oh, okay. Yeah, two credits there. One was gym. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but but eventually, uh, so uh, I had to I had to share this because uh, then uh, so I had an appointment to do a do a test and uh, at the college and and the power went off. I said, oh, no, I don't have to go there. That's how I wait. He was getting test anxiety and he was like, yeah, I don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Then uh, she says, "Oh, the power's back on. You, you still have time." And so I went and, and I went to go challenge the test and to see if I can get accepted. I need like a grade ten math, and I end up uh, almost having like a like a, like eleven point five or oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. almost a grade twelve math, and yeah. and I passed the course, and uh, yeah, so I have that to fall back to the. Well, actually, I'm, I am applying for a job now to work in one of the mines. He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. So I went to work in the morning. I said, I better go check on my uh, my workers at the at the job site, I said, and uh, told my wife I'm going to take off, and it's about an hour and a half drive. 
And I was over looking around for coins in the morning to buy coffee. and uh, <laughs> but didn't I didn't have any money left. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I went to a job site and they said, oh, Pat, he says, uh, they walked by one of the office. And he says, uh, Pat, uh, you're just in time. We we're going to, we we're looking all over for you or we're going to call you. He says, uh, we got some good news for you. He says, uh, we're going to give you a, a contract. He says, it's going to be till the project's done. So oh, the others are like another year and a half. We got blessed the next wow. morning, yeah. Another year and a half. And so we were, uh, so uh, I got blessed and, and uh, God's been good to you. It's better than gambling. Yeah, good. Yeah, making <laughs> yeah. more money than gambling. Yeah, yeah, God's been good to me. And, uh, but uh, as, a, as a business, uh, let's call it the owner, and I'm still learning today how to uh, budget and all that. And it's a very, uh, it's a learning experience for me and what not to do and what to do. And Now it shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all His commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. But the, the main thing, for me, it was to be honest in any way and be uh, and let them know who I am and that I that I uh, that I that I am a Christian and, and that I uh, I serve. Uh, so my workers do have respect for me when I when I went to the job site and they, they would, uh, sometimes swear and they say, "Oh, we're sorry." And I mean, like they they knew and mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, I noticed uh, my my friends too. Like uh, when I when I when I got saved, like I couldn't couldn't be around with them for I wasn't like strong enough to hang around with them. And uh, I guess it's one thing that as a new believer that we have to keep our distance from people that are not not serving the Lord and until we're strong. You know what I mean? Because we can fall right back into it. And, yes, uh, it's easy, and, uh, especially in gambling. Yeah. It's a strong. Yeah. Strong. Um, so for a couple of years, I I didn't didn't hang around with my the friends that I, I grew up with, and eventually I went back and I went to go to talk to them, and they they noticed a change, and and they they had a lot of respect for me after and the commitment that I had. But it uh, it's still a struggle. I'm not gonna. Uh, Life is life, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I do. I, I did. Uh, I, I fell a few times, and uh, but the thing is that, that I got back up. And I mean, like, I and mean, there's times where I don't want to get back up, but you know, because I fell so deep again. And, yeah. But I got back up, and uh, mm -hmm. because uh, at the end, at the end of the day, that like, if I'm not right with the Lord, and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I know where where I'm gonna go, and. And this is why I always want to, I, I, when I pray, I, when I go to bed, I pray, and regardless of what kind of day I had, and, and that if I ever was to pass away in my sleep, and that I had that, that peace in where I can, yeah. yeah. Is it harder when you have lots of money? Yeah, it was, uh, I, in a way, I, like I like because I had so much money and that, and that gambling, and uh, it really came back to me again, and uh, and I did go gamble, and I, I felt so bad again. <laughs> and, but uh, it was just like, but the, I think the more I talk about my about my my problem that I have was gambling, that's more conviction that I have toward me. You know? like I have to tell people that I, what I did and. And if I don't, I, like I'm sneaking around, and uh, and I feel that uh, that uh, that I have to share it just to overcome it too. He who watches over you will never slumber nor sleep. Sleep. And oh, my 
my child lay your burdens down and lay them at my feet he who watches over you will never slumber nor sleep Slumber nor sleep. 